you have appeared in a movie and two documentary films. Mm -hmm. So I guess you are pretty experienced in that field. <laughs> uh, if basketball was a film, what is the appropriate title for Olympiacos 2023? Oof. That's a, that's a really good question. Um, <sighs> for me, I would, I would have to say redemption. Um, just because the taste that was, you know, left in our mouths, you know, last year from the buzzer beater from Misic, I, I think we have the opportunity to understand what that felt like um, and go and right a few wrongs <laughs> and, um, and hopefully win the championship. I get, I'm sure your approach is one game at a time, but have you thought for another title if Olympiacos wins your league this season? Uh, like another title as far as a movie? Yeah. Um, glory, you know? <laughs> it would have to be like, I think I've been waiting my whole career um, for this Final Four specifically. You know, we, we've dealt with the, the previous Final Four, but it's a feeling that this is the one. Recently you said that movies sometimes are like a team in a process. Uh, movies love the stars, but your team is a team with multiple options and leaders. Uh, how easy is it for the coach and for you to adjust in that situation? And how difficult is it to stay ready and wait, wait for your number to be called? Um, I just think it's trust, you know, um, trust your teammates that, you know, when you're out there, they're going to make the right decisions and ultimately coach, uh, trust that coach is going to make uh, the right decision. He's been doing this for a long time and I mean, um, we have to attribute a lot of our success to, you know, what he's doing, uh, the team that he's putting together. Um, I've had a lot of, a lot of different teammates over the years. Um, but I've had a lot of, of the same teammates over the last two years, so ho hopefully that recipe um, will stay the same. Who's going to take the last shot, if necessary? Mm. Uh, I mean, I, I've given the ball to Sasha to take the last shot. I've given the ball to Slu to take the last shot, so um, the, it would have to be one of them, but I'm confident that whoever takes it can make it. Uh, Monaco is a team with a great backcourt lineup. Like your team, I guess. Do you think that these are the most important matchups uh, for the upcoming semifinal? Oh uh, man, but I think both teams have such good pieces at every position. Um, so it's ultimately going to come down to who can get an advantage at any one of those positions. Um, you know, when it could be between Moose and Hall, it could be between between Mike and Tom, or you know, Slu and Loy. Yeah. Um, so it, it's going to be a dogfight. I'm sure that both teams know each other. Uh, are there any surprises or tricks in a game like a semi-final against a familiar opponent? I don't think so. It's just one game, you know. Um, it, it ultimately comes down to who wakes up feeling the best <laughs> that okay. morning. Um, and, that, and that's dangerous for either side. Uh, adjustments are usual, sometimes needed in a playoff series. What is the most important thing coming to a knockout game? I just think toughness, like if you bring that fight to the front door, whichever team is the toughest in that first quarter, I think they'll have the best chance to win. What did last year's Final Four experience teach you? Um, experience, you know, um, you know, nobody wants to feel that feeling again, you know, and us being there and knowing what it's like to lose and have to go play the third place game, I, I don't think we want to do that again. Uh, you mentioned a few days ago a message from Vasilis Panoulis after game four with an air that suggesting no feelings in the court, am I right? Is this something also required in a final four game or both games? Yeah, I think um, just no emotion next game, you know, no matter how you play, like um, whether you have 30 or have zero, you know, you got to be ready to approach that next game with the same mentality that you start every game with. Um, you can't be riding high on the success or, you know, the failures of a previous game. Uh, this would be Slukas' 10th Final Four, Kostas Papanikolaou 7th and Coach's 4th. Uh, what do they tell you? Um, you know, I think they told me a lot last year, but I still wasn't even prepared. So, you know, I can tell you what to expect. <laughs> you know, it's like, um, it's really like um, the biggest event of the year. Like if. I'm trying to compare it to something, but like maybe like the Oscars or the Grammys okay. or the Met Gala, it's like um, 
I wasn't expecting like all the cameras, all the interviews, all the all the lights, um, all the production. Um, but it's an experience like no other. Any other advice outside the team that comes to mind before the trip to Kaunas? Um, just got to be fierce, man. It, it's going to come down to whoever wants it. Um, I think the refs are going to allow us to play, so it's, I think it's going to literally come down to who's going to be the biggest dog. Uh, there was an issue with Coach B that became viral. You made it clear that it was nothing. Uh, I will ask you something else. Do you think that all this live content from timeouts needs to be filtered like the NBA broadcasts? Um, because, I think, I think because the of the conflict? Um, well, I didn't know the camera was there. You know, it's just something in the moment. Um, I don't think anything is real outside of my daily life. So when it popped up on Instagram, I don't have any emotions or like thoughts about what other people may think. Um, it was just a coach and player, you know, moment. It's happened before. You know, I'm pretty sure it'll happen again. Um, but maybe the audio, you know, just like. I feel like that should just be filtered out just because, you know, teams can scheme and, you know, kind of know what we're about to do if they really wanted to. But at the end of the day, it's basketball. You have to stop the other team from, you know, doing whatever. So, no, it was fine, though. It was cool. Considering the personal tough times in your life, you have talked about it. Do you have any bad days anymore? No, I don't. I really, no. <laughs> you know, it's, um, it's hard to relate to people who, you know, maybe feel like, oh, why does this happen to me? Or um, why does this always happen? You know, that are, that are negative, just because I've been through so much and I've had so many of those days, but even then I had a smile and I was cool. So, um, no, nah, like every day is, a, it is an amazing day for me. After all that, do you have really any pressure before a basketball game? I have zero pressure, zero, every, every, um, Every game, like this Monaco game, I, I haven't thought about it. I know it was going to require to win the game, but I can't think about it because, you know, um, it's, just, it's just too much to put that type of weight on your own shoulders. Um, I think even the Fenerbahce game, like mentally I had no pressure, but my body was for sure feeling the exhaustion from these games. Um, but when that ball goes up and I get on that court, I'm ready for whatever. Is this something that you try to, to take it to your teammates? talk about it? Um, sometimes, you know, but you know, everybody's different. So I don't want to make them more nervous by saying, hey, no pressure, you know, because that often does the opposite. Um, so you got to find little unique ways to figure out what guys respond to and what they don't.